This is huge news. I was not gonna record a video today. You might hear my kids running around upstairs because usually I film my videos before they wake up in the morning, but this just in, we have at least rumored a, a, a benchmark score for the RTX 4090. Yes, that is right. We are finally getting close enough to launch that we will start seeing leaked benchmark scores. Now, the 4090 is almost doubling the performance of an RTX 3090. And now this is in 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. So where is all of this coming from? Well, it's coming from our favorite Copite 7 Kimi, Copite Hakimi. I've heard the seven might actually be uh, uh, standing for the, the sound ha, and that Copite is something to do with sports that I don't understand. Anyway, whatever the point is, we now have allegedly a benchmark here. Now, ah, should we believe it? Well, we do know that Copite over here is um, well known in the leaking community. We have seen lots of leaks from him turn out to be true. So this is a lot better than just some other random tweet on the internet here. And please notice that this says TSE, so Time Spy Extreme, and that's greater than 19,000. So using the number of 19,000, now I would imagine if it went up to 20,000, they would have used the number 20,000. So uh, 19,000, a little bit above something like that. Now, other people are replying to this saying that like, well, the 3090 FE gets about 9.9 .9 to 10K in it and Copite confirming, well, yeah. So this article I'm looking at here from WCCF Tech goes ahead and pulls some of the Time Spy scores um, for Time Spy Extreme and puts them into a chart here. So if we look at it here, we're seeing the 3090 Ti with a score of a little over 11,000, and then the 6950 XT with a score, you know, around 10,700, the RTX 3090 around 10,000, the RTX 3080 around 8,900, uh, RTX Titan around 7,100, 2080 Ti around 6,600, 2080 around 5,000. So there you can see that this is a massive performance jump. If you're going from the 3090 to the 4090, this is a, a about 1.8, 1.9x, if we're calling it this 19,000. It's not a 2x performance jump, but keep in mind that um, he is also saying that the um, that this is a conservative score. So he wrote a oh, greater than 19,000 saying that 19,000 is conservative. Now there's so many questions here. Is this thing, uh, you know, overclocked? Are we comparing non-overclocked models to, to an overclocked model? What is the driver situation like? How will this be tuned in the coming months? Again, we are expecting to see this possibly as soon as October with maybe a September announcement, um, according to the you know latest and greatest rumors as far as launch dates go. So this is super, super interesting. We are getting some other info here in some recent tweets with um, Kepler, who is also known in the uh, leaking on Twitter community with GPU stuff. Um, wondering if, uh, you know, uh, you know, RDNA 3 from AMD is going to be easily going over three gigahertz and Copite is confirming so does NVIDIA easily over three gigahertz. Now this could explain part of how we're seeing this big of a performance jump when compared to something like the RTX 3090. Because again, while we don't have any official specs, the leaks and the rumors point to it being more like a 50 something percent uh, in terms of jump in terms of like CUDA cores going up from the previous generation to this uh, this next generation, which wouldn't explain this much of a jump. But since they're also shrinking down to a, a much smaller node, keep in mind that um, the 3000 series was on Samsung 8 nanometer and they're going back to TSMC and getting a, a very, very uh, significant uh, die sh you know, you know uh, node advantage here compared to the 3000 series, which should allow for much higher clock speeds and all of that. So this is very exciting, but you know we still have the potential questions like what kind of power draw is necessary for this thing? Rumors have floated of like 600 watts or something insane like that. 
Um, but overall, this is really interesting. But then we've also got to think about, okay, you know, when this launches, what is its price going to be? Because remember, the 3090 was a $1,500 MSRP. And for a while, at least partially due to, probably honestly, mostly due to the crypto boom, uh, was selling for around $3,000. Um, the 3090 Ti, which came out towards the tail end of that crypto boom, more recently MSRP'd at $2,000, but was almost immediately marked down below that and is currently selling uh, for around $1,500. So the 4090 non-TI version, um, I would expect to be at least $1,500. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect them to go with a lower MSRP than the 3090. I think that would be crazy, especially given inflation. Um, and so I would expect this to be at least $1,500, and it wouldn't even surprise me if they tried to push it closer to that $2,000 mark. Now, all the rumors have also pointed to the 4090 not being the full GPU die, and th the possibility of there being a 4090 Ti in the future, just like we saw with the 3090 Ti coming out you know, a year after the 3090 originally launched. So that's certainly a possibility in the future. And it would be interesting if that then saw the actual like 2x performance increase uh, from the previous generation. Um, but again, uh, there's so many questions here. Um, also big ones like ray tracing performance, all sorts of things that we'd still like to know that we don't know. Um, but I'm just so excited that we're starting to see some benchmarks here. Although we've got to remember, this is a rumor. Now it's from a source that has been right and had insider information in the past. So there's that, but this is still just a rumor. So we can't, um, you know, we're not seeing the actual 3D mark results like uploaded online. We're not seeing the screenshots and you know, everything like that. So. I'm hoping that this starts to mean we get a, uh, a more consistent um, flow of, of leaked benchmark results. This is also not an actual game. This is synthetic benchmark. So we should also uh, really like to see what does actual gaming performance look like? What does ray tracing performance look like? Time Spy Extreme, I believe, is a 4K result. It would also be interesting to see other ones. Now, um, since I'm doing the video uh, today about this, I might as well throw in some of the other news that I would have talked about in a future hardware news video. How about the Intel Core i5-13600K? So getting an i5 now, uh, uh, CPU-Z and Cinebench results. However, this is an ES3 chip, so that's Engineering Sample 3. Um, which is not the same thing as a final release chip. This one is a uh, is is um, simulated to operate at the same frequency as a qualification sample. In other words, this has been basically overclocked to run at the frequencies that we would expect from a qualification sample, which would then more closely match the actual release chip. But I think that means that it's not going to be doing it quite as power efficiently. <laughs> Now, this is uh, the original source here is from Enthusiastic Citizen, um, but the, I'm uh, doing this off of the videocards.com article that I'll link in the description. Now, if we look at the overall results here, um, we're seeing some kind of uh, interesting stuff. So, in the CPU Z benchmark, um, we're seeing a score of, of, the, of um, 830 points in the single core and 1,031 in multi-core. Now the 12600K, which is the predecessor of the 13600K, um, would score uh, 768 single core and 5,590 points in the multi-core, which is a plus 8% single core and a 79% boost on the multi-core performance. Now keep in mind, um, that this, uh, I think we get more efficiency cores on the 13600K compared to the 12600K. This has six um, performance cores and eight efficiency cores, giving it a total of 14 cores and 20 threads. So, um, you know, it has that advantage, explaining the, the larger multi-core boost. Now, what's not really explained here is why the Cinebench result is so bad in the single core testing here. 
It gets a 40% increase in multi-core compared to the 12600K, but a 26% loss in single core. That's not really explained here. Just keep in mind once again that this is an engineering sample three. This is not a final released product, so take this for what it is. Now in other GPU related news, um, just keep your eye out if you're buying a pre-built with an RTX 3050 in the near future, because it's looking like we might see 3050s uh, for OEMs that actually don't have as many CUDA cores and so would perform noticeably worse than the um, uh, 3050s that we've seen on the market so far. So this is coming from the Golden Pig Upgrade Pack. Uh, showing off a picture of an RTX 3050 OEM card with the CUDA cores cut down to 2,304. So, uh, you know, that kind of sucks, to be honest. I hate when they do this and confuse the naming schemes where we're using a, you know, the same name for a card that isn't going to perform as well. And especially when they do that in pre-built systems and people might not know to really look for that. And you look up the performance for what your 3050 is supposed to be and then you don't get that performance because they actually didn't give you the 3050 that you were supposed to get. Now I'll leave off the last little bit of GPU news here with the slowest graphics card of 2022. It looks like we're having a Chinese domestic uh, graphics card launched here, the Glenfly Arise, uh, with 1.5 teraflops of power on a 28 nanometer node. So this thing is not going to be smashing those benchmark numbers, but it's just uh, interesting to keep an eye on the domestic Chinese market for GPUs and their developments, um, because, you know, someday <laughs> they might catch up uh, with the um, big players here. All right, guys, what do you think about all this in the comment section? Are you interested in a 4090, or is it just kind of theoretical? Like, hey, great, it scores awesome, but it's going to be hard to buy, and it's going to be super expensive, so who really cares? Are you interested in more of the mid-range and <laughs> what that has to offer? Uh, let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.